Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Techwood Solutions. I have a pretty interesting video that I want to show you. I think it's very interesting to hear this side of things. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments section if you think that he is being way too positive about there not being a potential recession. So I'm just going to share it with you guys. Uh, I hope that you learned something new and let me know in the comments section uh, what you think about it. Let me go ahead and start. The United uh, States, which we had a pretty strong economy back then, uh, we're seeing jobs report because as we've been talking about the u.s added a stunning 528,000 jobs in july exceeding estimates of 250,000. joining us now for a deeper dive on the labor market is u.s labor secretary marty walsh who talks to us as he always does after the jobs report this is a particularly good one though u.s labor secretary under the biden administration just so you guys know uh, to talk to you about uh, mr secretary so talk to us about where we are seeing this strength, what you are hearing from corporate leaders, because we just are getting through earnings season. There's a lot of trepidation out there that doesn't seem to square with this big number. Well, I'll tell you, this is probably one of the, the good best interviews I want to do today because uh, <laughs> the, the, the 526,000 jobs over, over estimation is great. Uh, and, but more importantly, when you look at the, the whole picture as a whole, uh, we're seeing all this, most of all of the sectors have come back to pre-pandemic. The unemployment rate is actually a little lower today than it was the day before the pandemic hit in the United States, which we had a pretty strong economy back then. Uh, we're seeing great gains in manufacturing. Manufacturing is not only back, but are exceeding where we were. Um, and then when you think about the chips bill that the president's going to be signing hopefully next week, uh, we're going to see more manufacturing happen in the United States of America on semiconductors. And, and long term, that will help us in inflationary pressures being less dependent on foreign imports coming into the country. Uh, we saw gains in education. I think part of that was what I would assess that as is last year this time, uh, schools around America and cities and towns weren't hiring as often as much because they weren't sure what the school year was going to bring. Now there's a lot more predictability. People have learned how to live with the pandemic, live with the virus. Uh, there are safety precautions in schools and, and schools are staffing up across the country. Uh, we're seeing all of that. And then obviously we still know you talked about gas prices. We've seen a, a decline for seven straight weeks in a row. Oh, it's the it's the largest decline in, in, in the last decade. But I think that's one of the most crucial things that he says. He's going to say a couple of things after. I don't necessarily agree with him. Uh, I think he's being too positive uh, without the understanding that there could be a potential recession. Uh, but one thing that he did say is for seven straight weeks in a row, we have seen a consecutive drop in oil prices, which if you think about it for the CPI data report, energy has always been one of the biggest contributors to why inflation month over month is so high. Still, people are looking for more return back to, into their pockets. So the president released some uh, oil reserves and, and also uh, working right now with Congress to pass the, um, the Inflationary Reduction Act that, that's quite honestly being debated in the, in the Senate right now as we speak. Well, Mr. not right now, but they're talking about it behind the scenes. They're going to have a, deb they're gonna have a debate, I think, in the next couple of days, hopefully. Mr. Secretary, is the, this report, the jobs report, so strong today that we just need to bury once and for all that the economy is headed to a recession? Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to say it's not, and I don't want to say it is, because I don't think, I personally don't think it is. Uh, I think that, you know, when you talk to comp companies, when I go around America and I talk to businesses and companies, they're hiring, they're looking to expand, they're looking to grow. Uh, last year, we saw 5.2 million people start their own business, entrepreneurship. Some of those companies are going to are still in existence today, and they're going to grow. And I think we need to continue to focus on making investments in supporting American businesses to continue to grow, whether it's in the manufacturing sector, the retail sector, the, 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 the hospitality, hospitality sector, in these other sectors that we have in the country, the high-tech sector, the biotech sector, all these different sectors we have, I think these companies want to continue to grow. And I think, you know, one thing I, I was on a call this morning and I said, you know, uh, I kind of look at this through my lens of being my old job. I don't look at it as being the Secretary of Labor. And I think about cities and towns all across America and, and gov gov government, and governors and states want to continue to grow. And I think we just have to continue to focus on that and do everything we can to reduce inflation. I think... And, I mean... No question. This is his focus of his job, right? Uh, I think it's it's very uh, encouraging to hear uh, the head of, of the Labor Department in the United States uh, to be so forward thinking about 
there not be a recession because it would not be in his best interest. It would almost be like he's not doing his job, right? If there is a potential recession, the idea of businesses wanting to be in business and wanting to continue to expand, of course, every, every business wants to continue to expand. Everyone wants to have their own business to some degree, right? With that being said, with raising interest rates, you can't expand because it makes it more expensive to borrow money. With raising interest rates, this is why you're hearing of huge companies, Apple, Walmart, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon, not only laying off tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, right? But on top of that, they are really working with their balance sheet. So quarter over quarter, overall, I mean, it just, it's, this is why they're saying that they're saying they're staying a little bit more cash in case there is a recession that they at least have an option to kind of like work with the capital that they have. Uh, and I think this is something where, um, and rightfully so, I understand uh, in his position, it wouldn't be in his best interest to say, yes, we are you know, headed into a recession because interest rates are so high and this is a pretty solid concern. But yes, I mean. The president laid out a plan two years ago to get America back to work. 10 million Americans almost have gone back to work under his tenure. Last year, he, took, he laid out a plan to deal with inflation. We're working on bringing those costs down, those pressures down. This administration, the Biden administration, did not cause the inflationary pressure we have. We can't lose sight that a lot of it was because of a pandemic uh, and global supply chains and issues around around the globe and, and the desires for people wanting things. So we're going to continue to move forward. And, and hopefully in the next several months, we'll be on this call talking about our inflation coming down and our economy continue to be very strong. Fingers crossed, for sure. Um, I, I want to ask you about another phenomenon and whether you are hearing about this in your travels and in your discussions with CEOs. And... Um, that's something we've begun to talk about, which in past, as, as companies prepared for inflations, for inflations, for recessions in the past, excuse me, they started cutting pretty quickly and pretty broadly. That's not necessarily what we're seeing this time. We're hearing from companies, maybe they're slowing hiring, maybe they're doing targeted cutting because they don't think if there is a downturn that it will be that severe. Is that what you're hearing from people as well? They're reluctant to lay off people. Yeah, well, when I'm talking to businesses all across the country, they're just talking about there could be a recession looming, but they're also, like you just said, they're adding to the bottom line. They're continuing to grow. They continue to add people on. Uh, I guess some of the bigger companies are slowing down a little bit in hiring, but when you look at 500 plus thousand jobs being added in one month, uh, the slowdown is very incremental, obviously, and but there are still other areas for growth. So I think that I think it, it, what, what everyone's kind of in the business community and in the world is a wait and see approach to see how we move forward and what's happening. Again, this is a very different time that we're living in. And I was a legislator in the last couple downturns where we actually had recessions where we had to raise taxes and cut benefits and cut programs. That doesn't have the same feel as right now. We'll leave it there. U.S. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh. All right, so you guys can let me know in the comment section what you guys think about that. I thought it was rather interesting. I'm not here to be political by any means. I don't care if you're for Biden or against him or if you're for Trump or against him. Uh, please don't overwhelm me with your political opinion as I would never want to do the same with you. Uh, with that being said, I just think it's super um, informative to have someone else's perspective, regardless if I agree or disagree with him. Uh, there, there are some facts with what it is that he said, right? Um, it probably is smaller businesses that want to continue to expand, but just like he said, and he admitted, uh, he is very well aware of larger corporations uh, cutting off or thinning off uh, the fat of the company of, of non-essential employees, right? Because of the uncertainty of a potential recession looming. And I feel like that's the phrase that everyone's been using. But with that being said, let's not get too much into that. I just thought it would be something worth talking about, especially as we lead into our CPI data report. One of the other things that I did want to share with you guys today is something that maybe did act as why we experienced so much selling pressure today. It's obviously, I don't think it had too much of an influence, but NVIDIA, which was doing so, so well, uh, just set really bad expectations for an up and, uh, up and coming quarter for expected revenue. Uh, and it dropped a pretty significant amount, a total of 7% on the day, including after market, uh, including after market hours, after hitting highs, 
of 192, now trading a little bit below 178. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this is that, again, the manufacturing um, of these micro devices, these chips, right, have been very popular, especially nowadays, right, as they're trying to bring that type of business back within the United States and setting up that bill to be passed. Uh, NVIDIA, unfortunately, and AMD experienced some selling pressure uh, because of it. One of the last things that I do want to share with you guys is how important it is to be aware of the up and coming CPI data report. One of the things that I had planned for tomorrow, you guys can let me know down in the comment section uh, or just make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video. I thought tomorrow, I'm gonna film two videos. I thought tomorrow all I'm going to focus on is I'll provide you guys with a quick one to two minute update on the day, but the rest will be breaking down the previous CPI data report so we know exactly the areas of opportunity and what was reported. And then for my second video, I was thinking of talking about you know what the expectations are for the up and coming CPI data report that is set to be released one hour before the market opens uh, and this is going to be on Wednesday, August 10th. Uh, so I'm super excited to see how the market ends up reacting. Did inflation peak at 9.1% or are we going to see a pullback? So I wanted to film two videos, break one breaking down last month's CPI data report and then the second video uh, talking about set expectation for the one that's going to be released uh, on Wednesday, one hour before the market opens. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, again, that will be posted on my YouTube channel. So make sure that you guys subscribe uh, and drop a thumbs up on this video. And um, I'll also uh, be hosting that live stream. I guess we'll just have to follow up with that tomorrow. Uh, but I really do appreciate you guys' time. Again, friendly reminder, I do trade live every single morning with our Learn Plan Profit group. And that is our Learn Plan Profit 2.0. If you wanna join and watch me trade live as soon as tomorrow, I would encourage you to take two minutes, click the second link in the description, learn a little bit more about our Learn Plan Profit Group and see if it's a good fit for you. If you have any questions whatsoever about getting started in the stock market, just feel free to send me a message via Instagram or via Discord. And again, all those links are down below. You can send me a direct message via Discord and that's that first link in the description or follow me and message me on Instagram and that's that third link down below. Friendly reminder, I only have one Instagram account and I've verified all of the other ones are fake so please be aware of that do really do appreciate you guys time hope that earned your thumbs up please consider subscribing and like always let's make sure that we end the year on a green now take it easy team